a little bit of an odd way to pay the tax, don't you think? Even odder as Peter goes and does it. And I've read scripture scholars as they try to like handle this, this piece, and they have to dismiss it because it's beyond their human reasoning. They want to be able to explain it in human terms, instead of recognizing that the guy who told 12 men to take five loaves and two fish that he had just blessed and give it out to 5,000 people that it would multiply in their hands as they gave it out. This is also the same guy who told people, his disciples, that when they go, right, that he was giving them authority to heal people, to deliver them, and to raise the dead. So we have a choice before us. Either try to understand everything in human terms, limiting God, or to say, you know what? Maybe I have to break my own little box that I've had God in. Because God often tells people to do strange things. To Hosea, he says, hey, go take a prostitute as a wife. (laughs) Poor Hosea, right? Yeah, go look it up in Hosea. He tells him, go take a prostitute as a wife. To one of the other prophets, he says, hey, take off your underwear and put it into the wall of the, of the city and let the sun dry it out. And then go talk to everybody about your underwear. <laughs> this is weird. So is this. Like normally, what do you do? You open up your wallet and you take out the money and you pay. Jesus could easily have said, okay, go talk to Judas. Judas has the purse. Take the coin, you know, get the right amount of coin and give them the tax. But no. Peter goes and does it. Why? Because this is the same guy that last time Jesus said to go do something he didn't understand. Loaves were multiplied. So by this time he knows. I just do what the Lord says. This is also, too, helping the disciples to get formed in their mindset of, if Jesus says he's going to the cross, he's going to the cross. It may not make sense to them. They were used to this idea of a triumphant Messiah who was supposed to come in, kick out the Romans, reestablish the Jewish state, and rule like King David for, sec- for, for century upon century, century. Amen. Right? And it's good that Jesus tells us that our way of thinking is limited. We hear that in Isaiah. God says through his prophet Isaiah that his thoughts are above our thoughts. His ways are way beyond our ways. And yet, Jesus is still very good. He provides in ways beyond we can ever imagine. He helps us to understand him to a certain degree. And then he says, okay, but you're not going to completely understand. We have to be willing to walk in that kind of tension. To recognize, as um, one of the sisters said a couple days ago, that the truth is sometimes stranger than fiction. The truth in God as well is sometimes stranger than fiction. You can't make up some of these stories as to what has actually happened with the saints. Like Padre Pio one time showing up in New York City as a cab driver. I mean, he, he's a monk or, or, or Capuchin Franciscan living in Italy and he bilocates as a cab driver in New York City, of all things. It's odd sometimes. The question that we have before us today is this. If Jesus were to tell us something strange, would we we listen? Would we be willing to say, I don't get it, God, but I know it's you? Would we listen? It's something that every single disciple of Jesus has to encounter. The people of Israel had to encounter it as well. They were not used to a priest being the one to get prophetic visions. And here comes Ezekiel in the time of exile. And he's the one who all of a sudden becomes the prophet. 
It's not that common back in the day that a priest would be the one to be raised up as a prophet. Normally it was somebody who was either among the guild prophets or somebody outside of that entire system altogether. And yet God had to do something new in the time of Ezekiel in order to help lead the people and prepare them for their return to the promised land because they were in exile at that time. What is God doing today that might shock and surprise us? Could he be breaking off the mold that we've had in our head that the only people who have access to God are priests and nuns and religious? A false mold, by the way, that was never God's plan and never even the teaching of the official church. But somehow a part of our cult, Catholic culture that, that is artificial and maybe needs to be shaken off of us. Thanks be to God, we have the example of St. John Paul II who was canonizing so many lay men and women saints to remind us that that box that we put on ourselves is not from God. How about the box that the one who has to tell us what to do is the priest? That he's the only one who can can hear from God in that way. The job of of an ordained ministerial priest is to raise up and equip the priesthood of the baptized to give direction, but not to control to empower and to send out as Jesus sent out his disciples. Jesus wasn't hovering over them when he sent them out to go heal, deliver people, raise them from the dead, to preach the gospel that way. He wasn't hovering over them. And it wasn't just the apostles that he sent out. He sent out 72 other disciples. So the new thing that keeps getting promised again and again, and there's been a big lead up to okay, in the past, oh, at least since the council, but even before that, we could, all, we could go all the way back to the end of the 1800s, is a new and greater outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the entirety of the church. To make the church as effective in its evangelization with healing signs and wonders the way that it was after Pentecost the first time. And to have that be shown in the entirety of the body of the church, laity, clergy, religious, everyone. It's one of the reasons why the Second Vatican Council specifically spoke about the priesthood of the baptized and talked about making sure that that was properly understood, making sure that that was properly valued. And what happened? The enemy got in the way right after Second Vatican Council and decided to have the church be delay what was going to be happening because people were going to fight over what people were doing at Mass only. Instead of recognizing that the priesthood of the laity is a priesthood to take Jesus from the altar to the world through the charismatic gifts of the Holy Spirit. So, our encouragement today is this. We want to get out of the mold that says, I can't hear from God, I'm not a saint. We're called to be saints from baptism. God is more eager to want to talk to you than you are to talk to God. The reason, and that's for all of us, because the reason why God is more eager to talk to us than we're eager to talk to God is, if we actually hear from God, we might actually have to listen to what he says and to conform our lives to him, right? Instead of getting comfortable in what we're used to doing. It's difficult. It's greater responsibility. But it's an adventure, and it's worth it. So today we ask the Lord for the grace to be willing to do the strange thing that we might hear him say to us. Good news is this. If we get it wrong and we thought it was God, and we can admit, okay, I was just wrong, that's still better than hearing what we think is God and not doing anything about it. 
And when we begin to try to hear God, yeah, the enemy might come in and try to confuse us and everything like that. But then at least God can then sort out to us and show us the difference. And you can say, see, this is what happens when I speak. This is what you hear. This is how you feel. This is what, what gets confirmed. And when the enemy speaks, what happens? This is what you sense. You're disturbed. Right? And the Lord can actually help us to hear the difference when we try to listen. But when we don't try to listen, what happens? We don't hear God. Of course, we don't hear the enemy either. Thanks, thanks be to God. But it's easier. It's more comfortable. But it's dead. It's like the peace of a graveyard. You know? Or there's the peace of, of Jesus, which can sometimes seem a little chaotic. You just ask the early friars and the early clares, right? They had a certain peace that, that people couldn't understand. So Francis and Claire were talking one day, right, outside of San Damiano, and the people thought the church was on fire. So they come with buckets because their conversation about God lit up the entire place. It lit up the entire place. But we have to be willing to say, okay, enough with my old way of doing things. Lord, show me what you have. And I say this all the time, it's not too late. God can make up for lost time.